From Esther Baptist Church on Witcher Creek, it's preaching time with Pastor Randy Wilson. To go and and preach to Dave's wife Tammy. Yeah, <laughs> She's yeah. watching. How you doing? Robin and Bobby are watching. Amen. My brother down in Florida. How you doing, man? Amen. All those other folks that watch us that aren't here in the church, thank you, sir. We're we're glad that they have opportunity to come and and be in church, even though they aren't in church. I want to give you three scriptures in three different books. I want to read these to you, and then we'll we'll talk about them. First scripture is found in the book of Romans, chapter number 1. The second scripture is found in Galatians, chapter number 3. The third scripture is found in Hebrews, chapter number 10. So I'll give you time to find all three of those. Romans 1, Galatians 3, Hebrews 10. Romans chapter 1, look at verse 17. Of course, verse 16 is the Baptist verse there. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God and the salvation. Everyone believes the Jew first and also the Greek. But in verse number 17, it says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. You see that? The just shall live by faith. Now turn, if you will, to the book of Galatians, chapter number 3. Galatians, chapter number 3. And I want to read to you verse number 11. Galatians three eleven. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. You got that? Are you noticing something? Look in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. There are six words, Jimmy, that I want to... I want to bear in mind, first two is the just, the second two is shall live, and the third two is by faith. The first words that we find in Romans tells us who will live by faith. The just, right? Then when we come across it again, It's not talking about who, but it's talking about how. I'm sorry. It's talking about what. The just what shall live. And then the third time that we come across it, it answers the question how. By faith. Who? The just. Will do what? They'll live. How will they live? They will live by faith. If God was interested enough to put it in there three times, the just shall live by faith, perhaps we ought to rein up there and tie our horse to that hitching pole. And perhaps we ought to just talk about faith every now and then. Because that's what's going to get us through. The just shall live by faith. Our Heavenly Father, Thank you today for this privilege to pray. Lord, thank you that for faith, Lord, that you gave us. We appreciate it. Lord, help us to just continue in the faith once delivered the saints of God. Help us, our Father, to preach now in a way that will be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Faith is the thing that pleases God. It says that in the book of Hebrews. And I know that you Bible scholars have already tripped me up. Because see, I know it's in there four times. Sorry about that. 
John said, turn that off, so I'll try to do that. Had my theme song going there. Uh, three times the Bible said the just shall live by faith. But it's in there a fourth time. It's in there in the book of Habakkuk, chapter number two. But it doesn't read the same way. It reads in Habakkuk, chapter number two, the just shall live by his faith. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> Hebrews describes the difference between people who live by their own wit and people who live by faith. Yeah. The Old Testament is true to its character and it is talking about Habakkuk's faith. Yeah. <clears throat> the just shall live by his faith. The New Testament is not the faith of Randy. Amen. It's the faith of the Son of God yeah. that loved me and gave himself. The New yeah. Testament leaves that word his out of it. Yeah. And uh, the Old Testament is just this simple, Daryl. The Old Testament is based on the blood of bulls and goats, right. yeah, exactly. which puts an element of what you do in it. The New Testament is based on the blood of Jesus. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. That doesn't put my works in it, yeah. but gives God the glory for all of it. Yeah. The standing that I have tonight is through the blood of Jesus Amen. Christ. Yeah. We need confidence in God. We need to live our lives by faith. Yeah. I believe you ought to consult God in everything you do. I mean, before you go to the beer joints, you probably ought to ask the Lord, should you go down there? Yeah, amen. I think you ought to consult Him when you go to buy a car, yeah, when you go to buy a house, when you're seeking a job or you're seeking a raise. Uh, and if you do not seek the Lord's will and you go to trying to do things by your own devices, your devices will get you deceived. Yeah. You say, yeah, but I'm pretty crafty. Got to read the book of Job. Job chapter 5 verse 12. If we are crafty, our devices will get us disappointed. We think we got it all covered. We think we got it all down, but our devices will get our scheme, our statistics will mess us up. Yeah. Walking by faith is something you do. It's not something that's just relegated to the Sunday school lessons. Amen. It's not just something that the preacher gets up in the pulpit and talks about on Sunday morning or Sunday night, but it's something that you put in practice every day of your life. The New Testament Christian, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, is by saved by grace through faith. Yeah. Yeah. Now, New Testament faith uh, is a gift. By grace through faith, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Yeah. Faith actuates the power of God, according to 1 Peter chapter 1. And the power of God is what helps us to maintain our Christian life. Yeah. And that's not a weak power, son. Yeah. The power of God is what causes the sun to come up in the morning. Yeah. The power of God is what holds the the earth in its orbit, if it orbits, I'm not even sure it does. But if it does and, and the sun orbits it, I, I don't know which one's true because I haven't been up there checking it out. But whichever one works, it's the power of God that holds it in place. It's the power of God that holds the atoms together that keeps this world from splitting apart and exploding in a big fire. The power of God has said, let there be light. And there was light. And a Christian is kept by that power. Never undersell God and never sell Him short. There is a faith whereby we worship. I believe Abel had that straight when he worshipped by faith whenever he offered the blood of that little lamb. I believe that, that blood that he offered was a worship that God would accept. Yeah. I believe God would still accept that today if we would come to Him with the blood of the lamb. Yeah. I believe God expects that in our worship service. Amen. Our worship service is not to show off your talents. Amen. 
Our worship service is not for you to get up here and brag about how you have this and you have. Our worship service is to take the blood of the Lamb to the Lord and say, thank you, Jesus. The, the, the worship of faith is illustrated by, by Abel, but then the walk of faith is illustrated by Enoch. Didn't he walk with God? The Bible said that they looked for him, couldn't find him. Wonder what happened to him. Well, he had walked with God so much and walked with him so long that directly he got closer to his house than he was back to Enoch's house. He said, just come on over and spend the day with me. We'll let you go home after a while. And Enoch went up there to spend the day and there ain't no night there. So he's still up there spending the day. The walking with God is a walk of faith. Working for God is a work of faith. The Bible said Noah, being moved with fear, prepared an ark. He done something. He prepared an ark to the saving of his house, wherein he condemned the world and himself had the testimony of righteousness. Remember that we cannot force God to do anything. We can't force God to save us. We can't force God to keep us. Amen. We're at his mercy. Thank the Lord he is a merciful God. Here's, here is what I always believe. There's a man named Joab, and he's got his faults. He certainly does. Uh, but he said something one time when these soldiers were getting to battle, getting together to battle, and they, they were going to fight. And, and old Joab went out there, and he said, Hey, let's, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's play like we're men. Yeah. Hey, man, let's play the part of a man yeah. and leave it up to God. Let's do what we can do and leave the results up to God. So many people want to get the results themselves. That's why they do all the promotions. But I'm telling you, we just preach and leave it up to God. And God is the one that does. Our faith has trials. When I think about a trial of your faith, most people think about Job, but let me just stop and think about Elijah for a minute. Elijah's faith was tried when God told him, said, I want you to go out there by the brook and I want you to sit there by that brook. Yeah. And he did. Yeah. He went out there at the brook and, and uh, he'd led into the desert. He wasn't the first one to be led into the desert. He wasn't the last one to be led into the desert. Moses was led into the desert. Uh, John the Baptist was trained in the desert. The Apostle Paul was trained in the desert. Maybe you and I will have to go to the desert, but that's where God trains people out in the desert. He said, I want to give you two things. Number one, I'm going to give you a natural means of support. I'm going to give you a brook. And he said, then I'm going to give you a supernatural means of support. I'm going to make ravens bring your food to you. Ravens don't bring food to anybody. They'll fight among themselves to eat the roadkill. I don't know where he got. I got a feeling they snuck in Ahab's window and pulled the meat off of Ahab's table and brought it out there and fed Elijah with it. But God had said, I've commanded the ravens to feed you there. You got a natural support. You got a supernatural support. I'm preaching about the trial of your faith, Mark. The trial of his faith. Listen. He sat there by that brook and he got to noticing this thing's drying up. Yeah, come on. Did Amen. you ever notice that about yeah. church? Yeah. Hey, this, I, I thought this thing was going to go great. God, this thing's drying up, man. Yeah, come on. I don't know what we're going to do about this. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, statistics. That's what we look at. Statistics. Uh, amen. Elijah goes to get a drink. He measures how deep the water is today compared to how deep it was yesterday. And he said, at this rate, I'm going to die of thirst here in 21 days. Yeah. <laughs> Statistics. Am I telling it right? And God refused to, uh, to let Elijah starve to death. He's got another plan. Well, it's our job just to stay where he put us. Amen. You remember when Paul wanted to go to Bithynia and uh, God wouldn't let him? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was Daryl this morning read any Sunday school lesson that Peter was the one that got the people of Bithynia. Yeah. Am I telling that right? Wasn't that that first verse when he, Paul, uh, the, Paul, uh, Peter to the strangers gathered abroad at uh, Cappadocia and helped me Bithynia and there's some other Dalmatia or something. 
But God refused to let Paul go, uh, but he let Peter reach those people that Paul couldn't reach. Do you know that God has got somebody that I can't reach and he sent somebody else over there to reach them? It's not my job to try to break the other church up. It's my job to do what God told me right here where I am. Amen. <laughs> God splits us up and puts us here and there. I don't know why Witcher Creek needs four Baptist churches. I mean, ours would be fine. But you know what? There's folks down to Mount the Hollow that I can't reach. We don't have the same culture. There's folks up the Hollow that they can't reach. We don't have the same culture. But God sets us where, hey, and if the brook's drying up, just let it dry up. He's going to find a widow lady somewhere in another land that'll support Amen. us. Yeah. Statistics drive preachers crazy. And I see, look here, what was our text? The just shall live by statistics. The just shall live by growth programs. By, by these, I, I know a church, this is the truth, a Baptist church. I know, I'm not going to tell you where, but in order to get people to come to their church, they give away a car. Not a car like you're thinking about. A new car. I know if I'd give away a car, I'd be glad they took it. <laughs> but, but we are so eat up. Amen, preacher. You are, you are doing so good tonight, preacher. We, we are so eat up with our promotions and our statistics. Hey, how about just being like Joab? Let's just play the man and leave it up to God to build the church. I mean, you know, when the offerings is good and new people in attendance and we've got a few professions on the rise, statistically we're successful, we're rich and we're increased with goods and don't have need of nothing. Statistically we're doing well. But hey, buddy, you better read that book. Revelation chapter 3 verse 17 would be a good place to start. The Bible teaches this, that statistics do not take into account or recognize the working of God. See, if God don't do something, we sunk. Perhaps we should seek first the kingdom instead of the statistics. (laughs) Amen. How are we doing? I'm talking about faith. I'm preaching about faith. Faith will be rewarded. If not here, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, the victory that overcomes the world be our faith, and in heaven we will not lose our reward. Yeah. Jesus is our foundation. Amen. And being our foundation, we build on Him. Yeah. What we use, the materials we use, the Bible <coughs> excuse me, defines them as gold or silver or precious stones or wood or hay or stubble. And we set out to build on the foundation. What are we building with? (coughs) Some of us build with gold. Some of us build with silver. Some of us build with precious stones. If you don't have any gold, you have to build with something else. And maybe you haven't got any silver. Maybe you do have some precious stones. Maybe all you got is wood. Build with what you got. Moses didn't have nothing but wood. Yeah. Amen. Am I telling it right? Whenever he said, I ain't got nothing, God said, what you got in your hand? Yeah. He said, got a stick. Yeah. Well, listen, if you got a stick, how about using that stick? Amen. Throw that yeah. stick down on the ground, and when he threw that stick down on the ground, it's party time. Amen. Yeah. He said, let me out here. And here he goes. He's yeah. trying to get away from that snake running around and around in a circle. And God looked at him and said, Moses, I, I want you to touch that snake on the tail. Yeah. I'm not a real snake handler. But if I'm going to pick him up, I'm going to put something on his head. Yeah. Right. And I'm going to get him by the back of the neck. Yeah. And hope he can't reach around yeah. there. But I am not going to reach and get him by the tail. Yeah, amen. Moses, take him by the tail. Yeah. <laughs> Statistics says 
he'll whack you. I remember one time I cut a rattlesnake's head off. Uh, oh, don't tell Peter on me. But I cut a rattlesnake's head off and somebody said, well, I'd like to have them rattlers. An old dummy, I just a teenager, I rushed down and got a hold of them rattlers. Don't you know that bloody stub hit me right there? How in the world he... Uh, shake your peaky little yeah, head. Uh, you know, if you've ever messed with him, hey, that, yeah. watch, watch the head even if it's cut off. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> But, but, uh, but Moses wretched and obeyed God, did what he said, and he took that wood and that little piece of wood became a rod in his hand again and he went it down there. And, and that, that little piece of wood got so powerful that every time Moses raised it up, Pharaoh would go like that. Yeah, amen. Yeah. What do we build with? Wood, hay, or stubble? Faith can move mountains. Yeah. Faith... Uh, uh, mustard seed faith. Everybody said, well, I'd like to have more. And I think I get uh, caught in that trap sometime. But the issue is not how great a faith we got. The issue is uh, who we got faith in. Amen. Yeah. Faith is not our great accomplishment, but it is our great God. Yeah. The greatest enemy of faith is within ourselves. Yeah. <clears throat> Did y'all hear the story about the wasper? Well, I think that's the way Mommy pronounced that. Y'all probably call it wasp. The wasper went to church, Mommy said. Said it was a nice day. He got up. It was a good Sunday morning. The sun was shining. He flopped his little wings and he said, I'm going to leave my tree and I'm going to go down to the church house. And so he left his tree and he went. And, and, now, I'm not Mississippi squirrel. You, you wait till I get finished here. Uh, he flew in an open wind and there was a little girl sitting there and he thought, I'll just sit beside her. And he landed right beside her. Eek! She jumped up and ran away. Oh my goodness, somebody protect me. There's a wasper in here. Well, somebody took a song book, you know, and they, they aimed to whomp him and he got away. He went on up to the light. He circled around and he said, well, there's an old grandma. I'll go sit by her. And so he went and sat down beside a grandma, and grandma pulled the same thing to the little girl. Hey, get the wasper, get away from me. And they, they're trying to swarp at him again. They're swarping. Some of them trying to swarp at him while he's flying. He's circling around. He said, I don't know where I'll go. Maybe I'll get in the pulpit with the preacher. And he got up there, and the preacher took a swarp at him. The wind knocked him down to the floor, and he got up and shook his shook self, and he said, I'm leaving here. He said, These people don't make me welcome at all. He was blaming them because they knew he was a stinker. Yeah, amen. <laughs> amen. Yeah. The greatest enemy of our faith is not somebody else. Yeah. The greatest enemy of our faith is when we play the walls yeah. and we want to be the one that inflicts pain on everybody. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me do this. This will help me. Real faith wars against the works of the flesh in our life yeah. and produces the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah, amen. If you want to have love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness, even if you want to have faith, exercise faith. Yeah, amen. You say, how can I exercise when I don't have Don't tell me you ain't got it because God said He gave it to you. Yeah. Every man amazes your faith. Right. Exercise what you got. Faith believes Romans 8.28. Do you? Amen. Faith does. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 6, Paul tells us about the armor of God. And he says, put on the whole armor of God. And then in verse 16, I think it is, he said, above all, taking the shield of faith. Now, the scholars tell us that that's not above all in, in order of importance, but it's above all like a, a shield yeah. over you in battle. Like an umbrella, like a roof. Everywhere, uh, everywhere you go, you hold up that shield of faith. Amen. The biblical shield was large enough for you to hide behind. Amen. And uh, uh, in Isaiah 21, they anointed it to make it flexible and fit for war. Yeah. Jesus was anointed with the oil of gladness uh, above his fellows. But you and I can be anointed with the joy of the Lord. 
and the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. That's why I don't like to come in here with a long face. Amen. Because the, the depression and the headache and the problems are not the strength of the Christian. The strength of the Christian is knowing that I've got the Lord Jesus on my side. I take that shield of faith and I sing that joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. When Nehemiah and Ezra stood up on that day, they made that pulpit and when they stood up to read the book, they did what we don't do. They stood up when they heard the reading of the Word of God. When they stood up, uh, 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 the men stood there and the people wept when they heard about their sorrow and uh, about their sins and they were sorrowful and that's okay. But, but the prophet said, don't overdo it. This is a good day to rejoice and be glad. Yeah. This is a day when the joy of the Lord uh, is, should be our strength and knowing your shield and get ready to believe God. Amen. A hundred years ago, probably longer than that now, these Baptist illustrations gets kind of old. But there was a man by the name of Charles Blondin. He was a tightrope walker. And Mr. Blondin stretched a tightrope across... Niagara Falls. And uh, he took 300 pounds of potatoes and put it in a wheelbarrow. And he wheeled that barrel across Niagara Falls. And he come back to the side and everybody applauded. Yay, good job, good job. He said, how much do you weigh? The fellow said, I weigh 150 pounds. He said, did you just see me weigh, uh, wheel 300 pounds of potatoes? He said, I saw it. He said, well, do you believe I can wheel you across there? The guy said, yeah, I believe it. He said, get in the barrel. Yeah, amen. Real faith gets in the barrel. Yeah. How many believe and yet they don't have real faith? They just believe about it. You know what James calls that? Listen carefully. James calls that dead faith. Yeah. He said they, dead faith talks a good game. Yeah. Intellectually, it knows the vocabulary. Amen. It, it can quote the verses. That's the problem with a lot of people that are raised in church. Yeah. They know the verses. They can quote the verses, but their walk and their talk don't match up. Amen. Amen. They're different. They're here and they, quote, love the Lord, they say. But just as soon as they get an opportunity like that wasp, they want out of here. Yeah. <clears throat> their works do not back up their words. Are they saved? No. They are not saved because they only have an intellectual belief in God. Yeah. Stay with me. James goes on and not talking about a dead faith. But he talks about a demonic faith. Yeah. And he said the demons believe enough to tremble. Yeah. Devils get emotional about this thing. Yeah. Is emotion enough to make us tremble? Is that saving faith? Uh, uh, emotional hearers, the Bible said they were anon received the word in the parable of the sower, but they don't have a root. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> and when trials comes up, they're offended yeah. and enticed back into their sinful life. Yeah. So he's enlightened in his mind. He's stirred in his emotions, but he's not changed in his heart. Yeah. Then there is a third type of faith that they receive. John 1, 12. And as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. And when they received Him, it's revealed in their life. Yeah. You show me your faith by your lack of works, I'll show you my faith by my work. Amen. <coughs> Saving faith is not only a faith that intellectually can say the words, it's not only a faith that gets emotional about it sometimes, but saving faith changes your will yeah. to where you have a will 
to serve God. And if you don't have a will to serve God, you are not saved. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm trying to tell you the truth. Nobody has to knock on my door and say, are you coming to church? Yes, I'll be there. Why will I be there? Because it's my will to do the will of God. Amen. <laughs> Not only the mind and the emotions, but the will. The mind understands the gospel. The emotions rejoice in the truth. But the will obeys the truth. Have faith in God. I think I'm preaching on faith. Three times, three times in the New Testament, God said the just shall live by faith. Who will? The just will. Yeah, amen. How will they live? By faith. Yeah. What will they do? They'll live. Yeah. By faith. Are amen. you listening to me? Right. I'm not trying to talk you out of your salvation. If you're saved, you know whether you're saved or not. Yeah. But if, you, if, if you're just an emotional here or just an intellectual here, you know how many people, you know how many people Tells me why I believe that. Yeah. You know how many people will justify their own wicked life saying, well, I believe the Bible. Yeah. They believe it intellectually. Yeah. It's never affected their will. Right. If Amen. it would affect their will, they'd be sitting right here in this church right. tonight. Amen. Well, what about their emotions? I've had people get so emotional that they'd stand up and testify, the devil can't stop me. I'm coming. Yeah. If you yeah. said that, Raise your hand. Oh, the devil must have stopped him. Yeah, amen. But when God gets down inside your will, yeah. amen, and yeah. you say in your heart, I will arise and amen. go to my yeah. Father and say, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in thy sight I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Yep. Make me one as your hired servants. Then the Father will wrap that robe around you. He'll put them shoes on your feet and a ring on your hand and say, Rejoice with me. My son that was dead is alive again. Amen. The just shall live by faith. Let's bow our prayer. I wonder tonight if you would just stop and think it over. Why are you here? Are you here because you want to be? Are you here because daddy or mommy made you come? Or are you here because it's just a thing you do on Sunday? Or are you here because you love the Lord and appreciate the fact that he saved your soul from a devil's hell? I'm going to pray. We'll have altar call and you'll have an you'll have opportunity to come and pray with me. If you'd like to do that, I just want you to step out of your seat right now. Just come up here with these fellows that are already here. Just get beside of one of them or over here in this room and just say, Lord, I will to do thy will. I'm willing to be made willing to do whatever you want me to do. Our Heavenly Father, tonight we thank you for the privilege to pray. Tonight we thank you for your love and your grace. And, and Father, I ask you just to intervene now with the hearing of these people. Lord, may they hear what they should have heard. Father, may they act on the Word of God and not on my broken speech. Help us, Lord, to just play the man and leave the results up to you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing together.
thank you for coming to church tonight. I hope it was I hope it was something that that was a blessing to you. Amen. I, I, I try. I put effort in.